Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrates that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the nations of the world were presented to me. Allahu Akbar. From the time of Adam alayhi salam till the last human being to walk the earth, he said, I saw them all on a plain of land. Uridat alayya al-umam, the nations. Some of the scholars says this was in a dream, which is revelation, and others have said this was during the night journey, and there are other opinions as well. He says, فَرَأَيْتُ النَّبِيَّ وَمَعَهُ الرَّهْتُ وَالنَّبِيَّ وَمَعَهُ الرَّجُلُ وَالرَّجُلَانِ وَالنَّبِيَّ وَلَيْسَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٌ Allahu Akbar. He said, I saw, I saw prophets standing and their followers were less than ten. Three to nine. Imagine Allah Almighty sending a prophet to a community, to an ummah, who is aided with hujja, proof, and ayat, signs, and wahi, revelation, and only three, four, five people believe in him. He walks into Jannah with his ummah and the rest of his community are driven into Jahannam. He said, I saw other prophets who had with them only one or two people. Ya ilahi. And I saw prophets who were standing all by themselves. Not a single person from their ummah accepted their da'wah. So Yawm Al-Qiyamah, this messenger, would walk into Jannah and the rest of his community, they are all taken into oblivion. Allahu Akbar. And now our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam is looking around, wanting to see his ummah. How many people will follow me? Where is my ummah? He says, وَلَكِنْ إِنْظُرْ إِلَى الْأُفُقْ فَنَظَرْتُ فَإِذَا سَوَادٌ عَظِيمٌ ثُمَّ قِيلَ لِي أُنْظُرْ إِلَى الْأُفُقِ الْآخَرِ فَنَظَرْتُ فَإِذَا سَوَادٌ عَظِيمٌ فَقِيلَ لِي هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكَ He says, I looked and I was told to stare into the horizon and I saw huge crowds of people having filled the horizon. And then I was told, look into the other horizon and I looked and I saw multitudes of people having filled that horizon as well. He was impressed alayhi salatu wasalam. And then it was said to him, this is your nation. That's us bi idhnillahi ta'ala. This is your nation. This is your nation. But it doesn't stop there. He is then told, وَمَعَهُمْ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَا يَدُخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَلَا عَذَابٍ And with them, there will be 70,000 Muslims. Ya Rabbi, make us amongst them. 70,000 Muslims who will be made to enter Jannah without any prior suffering or accountability. So everything you have heard and read with regards to the terror and horror of Yawmul Hisab, the day of standing, the day of accountability, as people wait, sweating and suffering and going gray, waiting for their name to be called out, to stand in front of Al-Jabbar, the compeller Allah, there will be a group of people who will be given special treatment and they will be given backdoor access into Jannah. Isn't this a small number however? Because our Ummah, the Ummah today is in its billions. And 70,000 is equivalent to any small village. 70,000 is very small. Your messenger alayhi salatu wasalam thought of this before you and I. Because he is bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim, merciful and compassionate to the believers. He thought of this. He says, as Ahmed narrates in his Musnad, فَاسْتَزَدْتُ Rabbi. I asked Allah for more. I asked Allah for more. فَزَادَنِي And he gave me. What did he give him? فَزَادَنِي مَعَ كُلِّ أَلْفٍ سَبْعِينَ أَلْفًا He says, with every 1,000, Allah has given me another 70,000. Allahu Akbar. With every 1,000 from the 70,000, another 70,000 will be given this privilege of entering Jannah without any difficulty. They come out of their graves in peace and serenity to be received by Malaika angels who have prepared for them vehicles, the beauty of which only Allah Almighty knows. And from there, they are taken to Jannah whilst everybody else suffers. He says, Allah has given me with every 1,000, another 70,000. So that is 4,900,000. But the hadith doesn't stop there. And the next part of the hadith, I can only translate, but I cannot explain. He said, with every 1,000, another 70,000 plus, 
وثلاث حثيات من حثيات ربي عز وجل in addition to that three handfuls from the handfuls of my lord we don't understand this but we know it is great thus umar radiyallahu anhu when he heard this he said allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar one of the narrators of this hadith when hearing this he took him by his clothes and he said to him did you honestly hear this from the prophet sallallahu he said i heard it from him and my heart fully comprehended it as well allahu akbar then our messenger sallallahu alaihi got up thumma nahada fadakhala man zilahu فخاض الناس في أولئك الذين يدخلون الجنة بغير حساب ولا عذاب فقال بعضهم فلعلهم الذين صحبوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال بعضهم فلعلهم الذين ولدوا في الإسلام فلم يشركوا بالله شيئا وذكروا أشياء He says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم got up without any further elaboration and entered his house so the companions, they began to speak. What did they begin to speak about? Some of the Sahaba said, maybe they are the ones who accompanied the Prophet ﷺ. Maybe it's them. Others, they said, no, we think it's the ones who were born into Islam and they never had associated a partner with Allah. And they mentioned other opinions. Then the Messenger ﷺ came out and he said to them, What are you discussing? They said, we're trying to find out who these 70,000 blessed people are. And then he gives the, the answer. You and I are a people who fear the day of Qiyamah and the horrors associated with it and its longevity. Then these are four characteristics that we should try to apply should we, be, should we wish to be spared. He says, He says, these 70,000 plus people they are a people who, number one, they don't ask for ruqya. Number two, they don't brand themselves with fire. Number three, they don't follow bad omens. And number four, they put their reliance solely upon Allah. They don't ask for ruqya. They don't ask for somebody to recite ruqya upon them. Is this haram? No, nobody has said this is haram. But they, their reliance upon Allah is so great that they will only ask for ruqya from the Creator Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. This also shouldn't be misunderstood that if somebody offers you ruqya without you asking, it doesn't mean that you should reject it. It wasn't from the sunnah to reject ruqya when offered, as our Messenger وسلم, did not reject the ruqya of our mother Aisha. And he did not reject the ruqya of Angel Jibreel when given to him. But our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he fell ill because of the magic that was afflicted upon him by the Yahudi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not ask any human being for ruqya. It was only until Jibreel Alaihi Salam came down, but he wouldn't ask. So they are a people who don't ask for ruqya. Also, they don't brand themselves with fire. لا يكتبون. This is a form of treatment called cauterization today. Our Messenger وسلم, permitted it, but he disliked it tremendously because of the pain involved. Number three, they don't follow any bad omens. So they don't see any number as unlucky, or place as unlucky, or a time as unlucky. Their reliance is upon Allah. And then the Messenger وسلم, summarizes and says, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They are a people who put their trust in Allah. They are a people who have put their trust in Allah.